The following is a class given by His Holiness Jayapataka Swami Maharaj on November 7th, 1986 at Iskan Soho Temple in London, UK. The class begins with a reading from the Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, Anshilila, Chapter 4, Verse 87 through 104. Hari Das ko he Prabhu suno Hari Das. Ore la dabo ihe iho chahena kori devi nash. Translation: Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu then said to Hari Das Thakur, My dear Hari Das, please hear me. This gentleman wants to destroy another's property. Kori estapo dabo ke ho nakaya bilai. Nishadhiho ihare janana kore onnai. Translation One who is instructed, entrusted with another's property does not distribute it or use it for his own purposes. Therefore, tell him not to do such an unlawful thing. Kodidasa kohe mitha obimana kori tumar gombir hidoe bujite na pari. Bodhidas Thakur replied, We are falsely proud of our capabilities. Actually, we cannot understand your deep intentions. Kon kon karja tumi koro kon dare tumi na janai le ke ho jani te na pare. Unless you inform us, we cannot understand what your purpose is, nor what you want to do through whom. Ita dusha tumi hare. My dear sir, since you are a great personality, since you, a great personality, have accepted Sanatan Goswami, he is greatly fortunate. No one can be as fortunate as he. Tabe Mahaprabhu Kori Duhare Alingan Madhyana Kori Te Uti Kori Lagaman Thus Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu embraced both Haridas Thakur and Sanatan Goswami. These are two great devotees. And then got up and left to perform his noon duties. Sanatane kohi hodidas akori alingan tumar bhagir simana jaya kotan. My dear Sanatan Haridas Thakur said, embracing him, No one can find the limits of your good fortune. Tumar deho kohena prabhu morani jodan. Tumar samavad hyuman nahi kono jan. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has accepted your body as his own property. Therefore, no one can equal you in good fortune. Nicho dehe ke, nicho dehe jeka jona pare na kori te. Se ka chukorai be tuma se imathura te. What Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu cannot do with his personal body, he wants to do through you, and he wants to do it in Mathura. Je korai te chahi sha se siddho hoi, tumar sobat goe kohilu destroy. Whatever the Supreme Personality of Godhead wants us to do will successfully be accomplished. This is your great fortune. That is my mature opinion. Bhakti Siddhanta Sastra Achar Nirnoi Tomadwari Korai Bena Ujinu Asoi. I can understand from the words of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that he wants you to write books about the conclusive decision of devotional service and about the regulative principles ascertained from the revealed scriptures. Amare deho probor karche na lagi lo, Bharat bhumi te janami deho bhyartha hoi lo. My body could not be used in the service of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Therefore, although it took birth from the land of India, this body has been useless. The purport by Srila Prabhupada. For a further explanation of the importance of Bharat bhumi, or may refer to the Adi Diva 941. Vardhumi is the ancient name of India. And also Srimad Bhagavatam 519. 
verse 19 to 27. The special feature of a birth in India is that a person born in India becomes automatically God conscious. In every part of India, and especially in the holy places of pilgrimage, even an ordinary uneducated man is inclined toward Krishna consciousness. And as soon as he sees a Krishna conscious person, he offers obeisances. India has many sacred rivers like the Ganges, Jamuna, Narmada, Kaveri, and Krishna. And simply by bathing in these rivers, people are liberated and become Krishna conscious. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu therefore says, Bharata Bhumi De Vailo Manusha Janamajar Janamashar Chaka Kori Koro Koro Upokar One who has taken birth in the land of Harabhumi, India, should take full advantage of his birth. He should become completely well versed in the knowledge of the Vedas and spiritual culture and should distribute the experience of Krishna consciousness all over the world. People all over the world are madly engaging in sense gratification and in this way spoiling their human lives with the risk that in the next life they may become animals or less. Human society should be saved from such a risky civilization and the danger of animalism by awakening to God consciousness, Krishna consciousness. The Krishna consciousness movement has been started for this purpose. Therefore, unbiased men of the highest echelon should study the principles of the Krishna consciousness movement and fully cooperate with this movement to save human society. So, Sanatana Goswami was thinking about taking his life because he had all type of sores on his body and Lord Chaitanya was still embracing him and getting the pus from the boils or eczema and so he thought this is so offensive, this is so bad that my pollution from my body is weighing on Lord Chaitanya therefore I should take my life but then Lord Chaitanya he said that because you're a devotee your body is pure so I don't take anything to be a contamination in any case, you've already given your body to Krishna, so you cannot take it. You cannot take it or trade it or do anything. Just let me give that example. If someone gives you something, you don't have the right to give it away. But since a devotee surrenders his body to the service of Krishna, and then Krishna, in effect, returns the body back to the devotee to use it in his service happens automatically. We don't see the body change places. But in effect, when we offer our body to Krishna, that's what's happening. So then, we have to take care of the body because it's Krishna's property. We can't see it destroyed or harmed. We have to keep it healthy. At the same time, neither can we. Uh, we don't have the right also to destroy the body in any way ourselves. We should simply use it in Krishna's service because it's it's his body. So that's the first part. So Haridas Thakur is glorifying Sanatan Goswami that you got the mercy of the Lord because he's accepted your body as his own property. And moreover, he's going to give you a very important service of writing books in Vrindavan about the culture of Krishna consciousness. So then he is lamenting that I haven't been able to do any kind of service. So therefore, what is the use of my living? My life has been a, a waste. Of course, this is all humility because Haridas Thakur, he was a great preacher. He would be spreading the glories of the holy name everywhere, wherever he went. Although, he was such a great chanter of Hare Krishna that when anyone would see him, they would chant. He was walking down the street, people would see him, even the little children, someone other they would chant. Even the people of other religions, they would also chant. Sometimes they would make fun and chant, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, just to make you know, some mimic. And so then, to make them feel more excited to chant, he would become overly very angry. 
Like, why are you making me? All the inside is feeling very happy because they're chanting. So then they would chant more. Oh, the little kids, oh, we're getting a hanging. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. And then he'd make, you know, bigger face and get them to chant more. And this way he was feeling very happy that he's getting them to chant. And Haridas Thakur, he was such a great uh, devotee that wherever he went, he would uh, he would inspire people. Because of his purity, he, he would uh, he would establish the real standard of Krishna consciousness. One day, Lord, uh, rather Haridas Thakur, he was traveling, and there was one snake charmer in India. Even today, they still have snake charmers. In fact, a little off the point, but just a. Uh, Recently, about a few months ago in India, there was a snake charmer, and uh, he was, you know, playing his flute and with the snake, but he got distracted, and the snake bit him in the arm, cobra. So normally you have about two, three minutes to live once you get bit by a cobra. You can about get about two Hare Krishna mantras and it's all. Over. <laughs> <laughs> well, he being an experienced snake charmer, he knew that uh, he was in big trouble. So he took a razor blade and he just cut his arm and slashed it very heavily where it was where it would fit. And then the poisoning effect and he fell unconscious, but he cut so much blood was pouring out of his arm because he cut all the veins and everything that uh, when they found him, he only had about two liters of uh, blood left. And so they took him to the hospital, and somehow they were able to save him. But because he bled so profusely, all most of the poison left the body, and he was able to survive. They still have snake charmers even today, and the same thing. This was in the newspaper, so it's it's a it's one of the professions. So at that time, five hundred years ago, there was a snake charmer. He was a devotee of Krishna. So he was chanting a mantra about Kaliya and Krishna. I don't know, we have the pastime of Kaliya Krishna here. A pastime where Krishna defeats a, a really big snake. And when Haridas Thakur heard that person singing the pastimes of Krishna, he became very ecstatic. Because this snake charmer was uh, a devotee. When he heard the chanting of Krishna's glories, Haridas Thakur started to dance in ecstasy and chant Hare Krishna, being absorbed in the mercy of Krishna's pastimes. But next to the snake charmer, a few few yards away, there was a, an astrologer, Brahman. He also he used to look and see his, on his roadside to the India. They have their chart of a hand, come and look at your hand. The light line and this line and all that. So people come. So he was, uh, or they do uh, charts and so on. So he was an uh, astrologer sitting there, Pandit, Brahmin, priestly person. And he's watching Haridas Thakur dance. And he sees all the villagers come and start offering their obeisances to Haridas Thakur. That he's such a great devotee, he's dancing. I mean, it's just like so beautiful to see him dance in, in love of Krishna. That the villagers, some just spontaneously felt uh, inspired to offer respect and bow down to him. So then the Brahmin thought, Here, I'm a Brahmin. He's just some guy walking up and dancing, and everyone's paying respect. I'm a priest. I know the whole, you know, astrology and everything, and people should be bowing to me. But nobody bows to me like that. So then he thought, Well, I'm going to go and dance like him, and then they'll all bow to me. So he started imitating, but he's, you know, just, you know, dancing with his own. It's not natural. He's just artificially putting it on. Where Haridas talk was an ecstasy. You know, for, for an outsider, I mean, they, maybe it's hard to recognize, but a devotee can recognize immediately when another devotee is dancing in ecstasy because something very natural, even though it may not be 
It may not be like a ballet or something, uh, but uh, it has its, it's just something natural. I mean, you know, it's spontaneous. It's not stiff or anything. It's just very ecstatic. So the snake charmer, you can see that this, what is this guy doing? You know, dancing and trying to imitate how he does tantra. He said, this, you know, this is totally bogus. So, Haridas Thakur was dancing so much and chanting that he got stunned and fainted. So then, the Brahmin imitated, and he, boom, pops on the ground, imitates it. He's, but this snake charmer, he says, he told all the villagers, look at this Brahmin, he's a complete imposter. He's totally false. He said, <laughs> And he goes and he gives a good kick to the Brahmin. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> so then uh, everyone can see what ecstasy he's in. As soon as you give him a little tap, he starts howling. You know? So then all the villagers got so angry. Now look at he tried to cheat you, and by doing this, he's offended the great devotee. So all the villagers start chasing the Brahmin with a stick. And he had to run for his, you know, for his skin because of his uh, offenses. Like with Haridas Thakur, he would catalyze indirectly many uh, many things which would induce the people to become more Krishna conscious and purify people from their offenses. So, I mean, this is countless pastimes of Haridas Thakur, how he delivered a uh, uh, big society girl from uh, King's court. And there's so many different pastimes. So Sanatana Goswami is starting to glorify after hearing all these praises of Sanatana, he is now describing the glories of Haridas Thakur. Sanatan Kohe Tumasamo Kevacheyan Mohaprabhurgane to me Mohabhagyawan. Sanatana Goswami replied, Oh Haridas Thakur. Who is equal to you? You are one of the one of the associates of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Therefore, you are the most fortunate. Avatara Kajya Prabhu Nama Pochare Senija Kajya Prabhu Koren Tumar Dware. The mission of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, for which he has descended as an incarnation, is to spread the importance of chanting the holy name of the Lord. Now instead of personally doing so, he is spreading it through you. Pratyaha koro tin lakha nama sankirtan sabarake koro name mohima kotan My dear sir, you are chanting the holy name 300,000 times daily and informing everyone of the importance of such chanting. Apone achare ke ho na kore pochar, pochar kore ke ho na kore na achar. Translation. Some behave very well, but do not preach the cult of Krishna consciousness. Whereas others preach, but do not behave properly. Acha pochar na mera koro ho dui kajo, tumi sarbo guru tumi jagote rajo. You simultaneously perform both duties in relation to the holy name by your personal behavior and by your preaching. Therefore, you are the spiritual master of the entire world, for you are the most advanced devotee in the world. Report by Srila Prabhupada. Sanatana Goswami clearly defines herein the bona fide spiritual master of the world. The qualifications expressed in this connection are that one must act according to the scriptural injunctions and at the same time preach. One who does do, one who does so is a bona fide spiritual master. Puridas Thakur was the ideal spiritual master because he regularly chanted on his beads a prescribed number of times. Indeed, he was chanting the holy name of the Lord. 300,000 times a day. Similarly, the members of the Krishna Consciousness Movement chant a minimum of 16 rounds a day, which can be done without difficulty. And at the same time, they must preach the message of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu 
According to the Gospel of Bhagavad Gita as it is, one who does so is quite fit to become a spiritual master for the entire world. So, Haridas Thakur, he was chanting 300,000 times a day, which means 10 million Hare Krishna mantras in a month. One floor. So if you chant 16 rounds a day, that means that you chant 10 million times Hare Krishna in a year. It's a lot of Hare Krishna. Heads up. <laughs> 10 million Hare Krishnas in a year if you chant 16 rounds of Hare Krishna per day. There's 25,000, there's one twelfth of 300,000. So each has 10 million in a month, each has 12 times more per day. So in 12 months, each has 10 million. So we do said, even when people are beginning, if they chant even one round in a day, 108 times Hare Krishna Day, it starts to add up. And this builds up one's spiritual strength. It's a principle that one should chant a fixed number of Hare Krishnas every day. It's one of the sadhanas or practices of devotional service. So Prabhupada guaranteed, well if you chant 16 rounds, you follow the principles of Krishna consciousness, then you can go back to Krishna and you can also take people with you. Eventually, you can also be a spiritual master and deliver people by preaching the message of the Bhagavad Gita as it is. So, we recommend that people chant, even if they're not able to immediately chant 16 rounds in a day, we recommend they chant some number of Hare Krishna every day as a regular practice. In India, we have a Namhata, in Yadna, India, but all over the world, we have Namhata program. And so some of the members who are practicing Krishna conscious in their home, they're not immediately able to chant 16 rounds. So we recommend we'll start chanting 4 and 8 and gradually build up to 16. And by doing so, they can experience a profound change in their life, that actually their life becomes a spiritualized in so many ways. And eventually they get more and more strength to chant uh, 16 rounds. This principle of, of chanting, Arigas Thakra was the best example. Even in his old age, he would always chant his fixed number of rounds. Here also Prabhupada states, similarly the members of the Krishna Consciousness Movement chant a minimum of 16 rounds a day, which can be done without difficulty, but at the same time they must preach the cult of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu according to the Gospel of Bhagavad Gita as it is. One who does so is quite fit to become a spiritual master for the entire world. So Srila Prabhupada has given his sanction that if someone chants regularly 16 rounds a day and preaches from the Bhagavad Gita as it is, then they can, they are qualified or they're, they're quite fit to become a spiritual master for the entire world. A spiritual master means a spiritual master for the world, because spiritual master is not material. So if someone's a spiritual master, then it's not a material service, it's a service for giving people spiritual guidance. So repeatedly Prabhupada wants his devotees to preach all over the world. 
But that doesn't mean that every devotee has to literally preach all over the world. They may. Or they may also preach in one particular area, taking it as the Guru Dattva Desh, or land given by the spiritual master, and concentrate preaching there. But the goal is that eventually the whole world should be uh, given this message of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. That was his desire. That everyone should be given the opportunity to chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Of course, it's up to the individual choice if he'll do it or not. But at least from our side, we should offer them the opportunity. Another important point here is that it's mentioned some people they act very nicely, but they don't preach. Sometimes there might be someone they bathe regularly, very clean cloth, very good knowledge, like a, like a pure priest or something. But they don't have that. They don't preach. If they're good in their habits, very strict, but they don't have any. They don't preach. They don't give it to others. They just themselves benefit from their own practices. Or the other side, sometimes there's people who are very expert at, at convincing large groups of people to take to Krishna consciousness, but in their personal behavior, they might be a little angry, or they might they might have some sort of defects. They're not completely good in their behavior. They're a little rough at the edges, so to speak. So we see these two type of examples, but in the case of Haridas Thakur, he was... Not only perfecting his behavior, but he's also a very dynamic preacher of the message of Krishna consciousness. So this is our goal, that we should know how to behave at the same time, we should be able to repeat the message of the Bhagavad Gita without, without changing, without Should be able to present it as it is. E mato guri jana nana kata range, Krishna kata ashadwe rohi akosange. In this way, the two of them passed their time discussing subjects concerning Krishna. Thus, they enjoyed life together. Note how one is offering praise to the other, and he's totally detached, he doesn't want to hear his own praise, he merely just ignores it. No, no. You're the good devotee, not me. My life is useless. You're actually the one who's doing so much service. In other words, say, no, no, not me. You're the one like this. So this is the principle of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. One should not desire respect for oneself, but should rather offer all respect to the other Vaishnavas. Chanadapi suniche na tarari vasahishtana amane amane Amanena means not to take for oneself. Manadena, to give respect to others. So you can learn this art of not desiring respect for oneself and giving to the others. Here in the movement of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, you see, without paying any fee, to learn the same thing, you can pay the alternative hundreds of pounds. He's saying the same thing. <laughs> but actually the principle is originally coming from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. <coughs> it's a Vaishnava principle. Not to desire respect for oneself, to offer to others. <laughs> and Dale Carnegie is making millions out of it. <laughs> so, he's not giving credit. He was the original source, probably because he doesn't know. But this is the, this is actually the, the Vaishnava, Vaishnava nature of a devotee is that uh, praise runs off them like water off a duck's back. They don't, they're not attached to receiving praise. Because sometimes they may receive infamy, may be criticized, sometimes they're praised. So they become equal to all these things. In fact, the Bhagavad Gita says a real learned person is someone who is equal to fame and infamy, honor and dishonor, the dualities of life. It's like when a, there was a, a devotee who was uh, distributing books in in an airport. 
And one man came up and started to chastise the devotee. It was a, it was a girl devotee behind the studio books. And was saying that uh, you people are all cheaters, rascals. What are you doing giving all this useless thing out? Why don't you do something real? Give, some, give people something real. So it just happened that uh, one of the supervisors of the devotees was nearby. So he went and kind of relieved the poor girl that was being, you know, so harshly dealt with and said, well, what's the matter? He said, well, these people, they're just giving out these useless books. What is the value of this? This uh, Why don't they give out something real? And then he pulls out of his pocket one candy bar. And he said, like, like this, this is something real. It was an actual. It said, yogi bar. <laughs> He said, this, look, look at this, this has cashews, almonds, coconut, peanuts, real stuff, <laughs> natural. <laughs> Give out something, what's all this? Useless knowledge, no practical value. And it said so many other things, you can't repeat. So, <laughs> that person said, so you like this, uh, this uh, natural nut bar? He said, yes, this is real, this is substance. You can eat it, it tastes good, it builds up your body. So, he said, you know who makes this? No. And here it says, it says here, Lu Barshana. So and so. It was made by, at one point, at that time, the devotees had a factory and they were making these natural candy bars. That's why they have a name, Yogi or Bliss Bar, or something like that. <laughs> So, uh, then they said, we make that. It's made by the Hare Krishna devotees. <laughs> well, then you guys might not be so bad. <laughs> he had to choose between giving up his, uh, his yogi bar. Or, or so he said, well, no. <laughs> So, Sometimes people come up and praise, they're very grateful, and sometimes people come and they say the worst thing. So, a person has to become transcendental to the bodily identification that, well, somebody praises me, I'm going to feel all jubilant, and if somebody criticizes me, I'm going to get completely frustrated and, and start lamenting. We become equal. And in this way, whatever difficulties come in life, it doesn't affect you. You see, some people, they, they're just hoping for a shanti, for everything should be very peaceful and no difficulty. But that's a very artificial position in the material world because at any moment there can be turmoil, there can be so many trials and difficulties. So if a person actually builds up their spiritual knowledge, then even some difficulty comes, they don't lose their temper, they don't become impatient, they don't start to lament. Or if somebody praises them, they don't become intoxicated and start to think that, no, I'm... I'm God's gift to the world. They just remain as a humble servant of the Lord. So, these great souls, they exhibited these qualities. And we can learn from the lives of great devotees how to take on these different qualities. So the Krishna conscious movement is meant for enlightening the people, we're not the body. That we are eternal spirit soul. We're the eternal soul or spirit or living force in the body. And if we understand that we're the living force in the body, not the body, then the next step is to start to act like that. Normally, people center their whole life around trying to simply provide certain amenities for the body. <clears throat> and if the body is a little cold or a little uncomfortable, then that's, that's very bad. And if the body is a little comfortable, then that's very good. But this is very... Your body will never be always comfortable. Or it's always going to sometimes be comfortable and sometimes be miserable. Sometimes it's attacked by diseases, sometimes it's pestered by flies or mosquitoes, or sometimes some near and dear one says so many uh, 
piercing words that enter into the core of the heart and cause so much pain. There's always some difficulty which is centered around the body. So practically to understand we're not the body, we're the living force in the body. That's a very basic concept, but it's most important. When somebody praises us, we don't become intoxicated by that and forget our responsibility to serve Krishna. Or if somebody chastises us, we don't become so frustrated that therefore we also lose our determination to serve. So to be to be fixed in devotional service, we have to be equal to both, to all the different dualities. And that comes naturally from identification with the soul, with the self, rather than the body. That is called self-realization. So one puts the theory into practice when one is detached from these different material dualities. So, maybe I should just one, like maybe I should open it up for different questions. Maybe some of the questions we have a discussion like that on morning call. He was a pure devotee and he said he chants 300,000 names a day, he used to chant. But he's supposed to be the present Brahma. He should have been in Golpur now and then why is he the present Brahma? Pardon? He's supposed to be the present Brahma, Haridas Thakur. Right. Now, uh, he, he, since he's such a pure devotee, he should be in Golpur now and then. Why is he being Brahma? <clears throat> He became a pure devotee when he joined Chaitanya Mahaprabhu or when he was serving Krishna. He must have had a desire to be a controller, to interpret as a Brahma, and subsequently he was a pure devotee. Other questions? Shri Krishna Chaitanya 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 Sometimes people come and they get um, very big rush, initial surge of enthusiasm for Krishna consciousness. And uh, as a consequence of that spiritual experience, they find the material world and their activities in the material world very detestable, very rejectable. So, uh, we also find that sometimes if people act very rashly at that stage of their development of spiritual life, later on, they feel somewhat disappointed. Sometimes go away. So how should, how should uh, new devotees be acting? Well, when, when there's a stage that one goes through, that the nature of the mind is that it always gets bored with things after a period of usually depends, may vary. Say, on average, something is very good at this Krishna consciousness, maybe it takes two or three months. Any new thing, just like you hear a new record. Hear it a few times, you get tired, you hear see a movie or a book or something. There's, there's always an initial interest, depending on different things, and after a while it fades. So, similarly, when one enters into Krishna consciousness, at that time, the intelligence and the mind are very attracted, and it's something new. So even apart from just a mature, like, uh, due to a, like a maturity or wisdom or something, that's augmented by the mind also just being very uh, interested in something new. So at that time, in the beginning, sometimes you find that a person has a tremendous enthusiasm and it seems that, wow, they're really, they're, you know, they're, some, they're very uh, enthusiastic or very uh, good devotees. But then what happens is that uh, after a couple of months, the mind starts to go to the normal stage of, well, look for something else. It's just in the habit of everything. It's like a cycle. 
collect stamps and you collect coins and you collect something, you know, it's always something new in the material world. So, at that time, if one has sufficient spiritual knowledge, <coughs> Open right now? No, not that. I like the art of the height. I like to have dark shine. I can look. Swamiji, I asked you a question. I want to say how many finishes. So the point is that in that first three months, if a person is uh, is able to gather an adequate spiritual understanding, then when the mind starts to get a little restless the intelligence will be able to to answer. It's like it is a mechanical trait of the mind. And then a person can continue. So we stress that it's like a kind of a, it's like a when a person first runs, they have what they call the first wind. Then they can lose their breath, but they keep running, they get a second wind and that goes for a long time. So it's like that. The first the mind immediately has, you know, gets likes anything new. That doesn't necessarily mean it's uh, a mature understanding, but at the same time, if they study and actually gain spiritual knowledge, then when the mind starts to go through its tendency or look, look for something else new, then you're able to control the mind and uh, differentiate between what's actually good and not. And then after that, you build up a newer enthusiasm, which is uh, on a more mature level. And that doesn't, uh, that remains as long as you about the basic principles of spiritual life. Uh, In relation to Krishna consciousness, one should, or if, it, if you would, achieve nirvana, and how far he has to go spiritually, if you really, every day in the morning and in the evening, he doesn't have to chant too many times, but at least he takes the name of God. And God knows that he is taking his name he's spontaneously. This is my question. And secondly, I being a solicitor, practicing for 10 years in this country, yesterday and today I attended for High Court of Justice, Supreme Court in England, Queen Bay Institution. And while the judge was talking to me, I closed my eyes and I said, Krishna, would you help me? And uh, the defendant, Barrister, who was from Oxford, and the judge talked to me, I open my eyes, he say, are you listening? I say, I do. He gave me this, he gets it. But my question to my is from you is, in relations to Krishna consciousness, how far one should, should go spiritually to achieve the goal to get Nirvana? How far should one go spiritually? spiritually All the way. way. On the way, yes. You could go spiritually on the way to get nirvana, which is complete happiness after death. That is the meaning of nirvana. Perhaps you might correct me if I'm wrong. Well, nirvana means the cessation of material miseries. So one can achieve the state of nirvana very easily, even before death, by practicing Krishna consciousness. You can experience the cessation of material miseries and experience spiritual happiness even in this lifetime. It's explained, Susukam Kortanabhyayam in the Bhagavad Gita, that this process is very joyfully performed because it gives realization of the self. There's two types of nirvana. There's material nirvana which the Buddhists achieve, which is the cessation of suffering. And there's a spiritual nirvana called Brahma nirvana, which is realized by uh, yogis. And that transcendental nirvana gives one uh, unlimited spiritual happiness. Happiness 
on the level of the soul. So we are trying to bring people not simply to end their material suffering, but that they can realize a positive happiness which is part of the spiritual platform. We said that Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, is by nature sat chit ananda eternal blissful knowledge. Iswaraha Panamaha Krishna Satchirananda Vigraha Anadi Adi Govinda Sarvakaranakaranam So because he is the transcendental Lord filled with spiritual bliss, knowledge eternally and because we are part of him Mamaya Vamsa Jiva Loke Jiva Bhuta Sanatana Therefore we also have the nature of spiritual, eternal, blissful knowledge. So we have to awaken our spiritual consciousness. This is done by a process of chanting and hearing, regularly chanting morning and night, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Hare We recommend that one chant a fixed number of times a day, we have meditational beads which aid one in meditating because you can use the sense of feeling while chanting. This helps the concentration. So if you chant for say half hour in the morning, half hour at night, gradually increase it. So you can chant 16 rounds in a day which takes about an hour and a half or 45 minutes in the morning, 45 minutes at night. Then you can achieve nirvana or spiritual happiness even in this birth, even in this lifetime. And when you leave the body, you can go to the spiritual world eternally, known as Vaikuntha, or the place without any suffering. That is what the Christians say salvation, Maharaj. So, but we are offering it now. You don't have to only wait for salvation. You can get the experience now. Otherwise, why the Western people? are taking to Krishna Consciousness. <coughs> they are not going to simply just for waiting for a post-dated check. They are immediately getting an experience of spiritual relief, spiritual peace, spiritual happiness. So, one should take up the process of Krishna Consciousness as a yoga very seriously. You can achieve that nirvana, Brahma nirvana, even in this lifetime. And when you leave this body, then it's a natural transition to enter into uh, a spiritual existence. There's no pain at the time of death. Harish. Yes? This is one of the questions, but uh, one just came to my mind uh, with respect to Sh Shiva. Uh, what is his uh, position in this world? What is his uh, activity that if one worships Shiva, then he he has, you know one goes there, or is it like he? What what is the position of the living entity if one worships Shiva? Shiva is a good avatar, an expansion of Krishna who is in charge of the mode of ignorance or destruction. At the same time, he is the, he's the original uh, masculine symbol in the universe. So, he is very powerful. He is more powerful than a living entity. And a person he is known as Ashutosh, the one who is very easily angered and very easily uh, pleased. And sometime, one time there was a hunter and he caught a deer. And he hung the deer up from a tree. And so blood was dripping from the deer onto a Shiva Linga. And it was a very hot day so the Shiva felt cool from that dripping liquid. He didn't differentiate what was the liquid or whether it was water or what happened to be blood, but <clears throat> he's very compassionate. Any good quality, he, he, he can appreciate that. So, then he blessed that hunter uh, with a very big benediction. 
So now in the hot weather in India, all the ladies and everyone, they go and they put water on the Shiva Linga <laughs> to get the blessing. So the point is that Lord Shiva, he can also give one spiritual blessings. But normally his devotees go to him for material blessings. And it said that whatever blessing he gives materially in the end, it, it always has some complications. So there's even a saying that uh, Shiva Ashirbad Kulonash. You get the blessing of Lord Shiva, but in the end it, uh, it destroys your, your dynasty. <coughs> so people, they always uh, go to him for different material benediction, but he gives benediction without differentiating whether it's actually good for someone or not. And so sometimes those benediction, they ruin a person. If someone goes to Shiva and requests spiritual knowledge, he's also a devotee of Krishna. He'll give. He's a Vaishnava Anam Jata Sambhu. He can give the greatest uh, knowledge about Krishna consciousness. And Lord Shiva says that actually he's kind of disinterested when these different devotees come up to him and ask for some benediction. He gives it without really considering the pros and cons. But when they, he's actually, he admitted in the fourth canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam, that the devotees of Krishna are the most dear to him. And for them he gives special instruction and special guidance. But normally the people go to him only for material reasons. So Krishna, Lord Shiva himself, has glorified the worship of Vishnu and the worship of Krishna. His wife, Harvindi, asked him that there are so many types of puja and worship, so many devas, and which worship should we do? What is the best? So then uh, he replied to Mother Parvati, Aradhanam Sarvesham Vishnu Aradhana Param Tasmat Parataram Devi Tadiyanam Samarchanam Then of all the different types of meditation, worship, of spiritual activity, Vishnu Aradhana Param the worship of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Vishnu, Krishna, that is the Supreme. He said, with only one exception, my dear Parvati Devi, to Dhyanam Samarchana, to worship those sacred objects connected with Vishnu, to Dhyā. For instance, the devotees of Krishna, the holy name of Krishna, the sacred uh, food stuff offered to Krishna, Mahaprasade, Govinde, Nam Brahmani, Vaishnava, Swalpa Punyang, Bhattarajan, Vishwasana, Vidwayate. These things are more purifying than even worshipping Krishna directly. So, Lord Shiva, if you study the teachings of Lord Shiva in the Bhagavatam, you'll find that he advises that one for ultimate liberation, ultimate perfection of life, should worship Vishnu or Krishna, the original form of Vishnu. So Krishna said that those who worship me come to me. Madhyaji. And those who worship the demigods. Devan Devi Ajoyanti Madhyaji Yanti Mamapi. Those who worship the Devas, they go to the planet of the demigods. And those who worship Krishna, they go to his supreme abode. So the difference between Shiva and Vishnu is very subtle in one sense. It's described that Vishnu is like milk. Vishnu never has contact with the material nature. When he expands as Shiva, then he has contact with the material nature. Then just like milk, in contact with tamarind becomes yogurt. So Shiva is compared to like yogurt or curds and a dahi. And Krishna or Vishnu is like milk. So milk and yogurt are the same. They're not, you can change milk to yogurt, but you can't change yogurt to milk. But it's the same milk product, yet there's a difference. So, 
this way, Sambhu is considered to be a transformation of Vishnu in the material world. There is a Sampradaya of Vishnu. Shiva Sampradaya is a there's a Vaishnava, because he's a pure devotee and he's a spiritual master also, therefore he has established a Vaishnava of the simple succession, known as the, and that's coming down to Vishnu Swami, and Malavacharya, Bhujara, is coming in that disciplic succession. You're from which part of India originally? I'm from Mombasa. Mombasa. But my parents were Gujarat. Gujarat. So the Balavacharya is coming in the Vishnu Swami sect, which is originally he got inspiration from Lord Shiva. Is there a planet? Shiva with one Kailash. actually go. Yeah, Shiva now. He has a planet, it's called Kailash. It's at the border of the material and spiritual world. can go there. But if you want to go to the spiritual world, then you have to go to the planets of Vishnu Lokas. What is the bodies like in Shiva's planet? Um, we of like we have ghost, subtle body, spirit. No, that because it's at the border, it's, they have to leave the universe to go there. It's the border of the material. It's definitely a more uh, spiritualized body. It's like nature. I'm not exactly, it's, not, it's not the ordinary body. There's a Kailash in this world, but that's like a Vrindavan. There's a Vrindavan in the spiritual world, and there's Vrindavan in Mathura, 100 miles, 100 kilometers from Delhi, 50 miles from the Taj Mahal, where Krishna has his pastime. So then there's a Kailash at the border of the material and spiritual world, where there one has to have uh, a more, uh, it is a suitable body for that place. It's not, uh, it's not um, just an ordinary uh, gross material body. But uh, in the material world, there's also a representative of that Kailash, and that's in the Himalaya. Next question. Watch my service. And if there's tinge of uh, tinge of material desires, and at the time of death, uh, how would Krishna look at it? Would he accept it as devotional service, or would he just consider that? Well, you know, one person? should have a spiritual master that can can uh, purify one's material desires. There's a desire to eat. You have to eat to live. So. One learns how to eat prasadam, the sacred food stuff. But one has a desire to enjoy family life. So then there's a way of having a Krishna conscious family. But one has you know, certain other desires. So there's ways of practicing to you know, dovetail or to engage these desires in the productive services of Krishna consciousness. If a person does it, they get purified from the reactions. And then they can uh, enter into the spiritual world. If a person leaves the body with some very strong material aspirations which are not fulfilled, then Krishna may give one another chance to fulfill those desires by taking another birth. Therefore, in this lifetime we should, we need to, to confide with more advanced Vaishnavas, what type of desires we have, and either learn how to engage those in Krishna's service, or if there's something which is not really beneficial, then how to uh, understand the, the real nature of those desires and to purify them. 
We only stay in the material world because we have some very strong desire to really fulfill. If our overwhelming desire is to go to Krishna, then we go there. But if we have a little want to be a sitar player or something, then Prabhupada said the Ravi Shankar took birth. This is his ninth birth. Now he's become a, a world famous sitar player. But uh, wasn't that this is his first first birth as a sitar player? Develop all the right? Which I can say is it's an overwhelming desire to go to Krishna to now. I don't get this. What I'm saying is without this love. You can't keep the desire. To maintain the desire. So that it just wants to be overwhelmed. It could, it could. Does it mean that it could be the end? Could. Not necessarily. I realize Krishna. Why Krishna has to be approved more than that? Pardon? Why Krishna has to be approved? More evident than he assists. Why doesn't he give more evidence? Yeah. And the last thing you said was? Yeah, that he exists. That he exists, yeah. So much evidence is giving. <laughs> what more evidence you need? He doesn't give more because. Uh, there are so many uh, atheistic people that want to believe that there's no God. So because that's their overwhelming desire. So he makes his, uh, his presence subtle enough that they, if they want to, they can say, well, maybe there's not a God. It's all about evolution or something. Although great thinkers like Einstein and so many others, they all came to the conclusion that there's definitely uh, intelligence behind the behind the creation of this universe, behind the formation of the universe. Just like in London, every night the street lights are going on, in the morning people are sweeping the street with machines and things are going on. You may not see the Lord Mayor, but you know there's a government in the city because everything's going on. So in the universe, things are all going on like clockwork. You can say, well, there's no example of something that's so uh, orderly that this is an accident. Just to keep something running, it takes a, a full administration. <laughs> so Krishna has the universe, it's all this, uh, summer seasons, and everything is going like clockwork. So people can realize, well, any, any sober person can realize there must be some intelligence behind it. He says that you can realize there must be a government, even if you can't see it, you know that it must be there by the symptoms. And if you chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Hare, then you can directly realize Krishna. Why don't you try this process and then Krishna will reveal himself to you in various ways so that you can have your doubts removed. That's why it gives us the process of yoga so by chanting we can uh, realize it. Practicing the yoga process, we can realize. But for those who don't want to know the Lord, who want to remain in ignorance, so He He also provides that option. He gives them a few excuses. Well, maybe there's no. Well, it's not really common sense. But uh, the doubting person, they can. If someone's looking, you'll find. If you're looking, you'll find. For those who are looking, we're, we're providing them a means so that they can find. You see. 
There are some people that they don't want. They don't want to know. But for for those who want to know, the, the door is open. And they, can, they can easily realize. I already know that it's scary because I'm one who can I have to And when you do that, you can just be aware of it good moment. Well, there's three levels of Brahman realization. Samiti, Paramatmiti, Bhagavaniti, Sabyate. So realizing that one is one with the Brahman is considered to be the realization of the Sat feature of the Absolute Truth. But if one realizes that one is, that the Paramatma is in the heart, the Super Soul, then that is realizing Satchit, or knowledge, and eternity. And then if you realize the Satchit Anand, then you realize Bhagavan, the personality of Godhead, that he is a personal form of Brahman. He's known as Param Brahma. Param Brahma Vibhiyate. Krishna means the Param Brahma. So we may realize we're Brahman, or we're spirit. But the supreme spirit is Krishna. Just like if we say he's minister and chief minister. If you say there's a chief minister, that must mean there must be a minister. Otherwise you don't need to say there's a chief minister or a prime minister. So if you say Param Brahma or the Supreme Brahma, that means there must be ordinary Brahma. Otherwise you don't need to differentiate Aram Brahman and Brahman. So he said, Aham Brahmasmi, I am Brahman. But that is that we are one, we are spirit. We are, we are of the same spiritual quality. But the further realization is that actually we are part of the Param Brahman. And when we establish our, our relationship with the Param Brahma, we re-establish our relationship as a servant or part of the Param Brahma, then that, that realization is much is, is complete, more than just realizing with Brahman. We may realize with Brahman, but as soon as we do any material work, then there's a reaction. Realizing with Brahman will also still make us liable to karmic reaction for whatever we do. If we can live without doing anything, all right. But in Bhakti Yoga, because every action is done as a service for the Param Brahma, he takes the reactions and what is free from karma. So it's, if you've already come to the, Krishna said there are four types of people who come to him. Those who are in distress, those who are in economic need, those who are inquisitive, and those who are wise, who have realized the truth. So if you already realize Brahman, you realize the truth of spirit, then Krishna said, of all the four, those who are wise men who come to me and become my devotees, they're the dearest. So then you can take shelter of Krishna and then realize the Param Brahma, you can be free from the reactions of karma in this world. Hare Krishna. How would I know that I have been a strong examiner, but not Krishna? Says. So far, my experience is I have no contribution. Can you guide me to see? One realizes the Param Brahma, there's no doubt. It's a very uh, elevated realization. It includes within it the realization of Brahman. So when one realizes the Param Brahma, I, Jai, Shishi, Radha Langani Shariki realizes the Param Brahman. Then one also has a certain relationship with the Param Brahman. 
And then one is able to experience the spiritual bliss, which is uh, what the symptom of that would mean the one who becomes detached totally from material suffering and enjoyment. And the different sim- there's different levels of development towards realization. So these symptoms are mentioned in the nectar of devotion as well as in the Chaitanya Charitamrita. It's very hard to hear. Because you have a column between you and me. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to give up. The last line was Bande Vishnu Mara. Bo Bhaya. Bo Bhaya Haranam. Bo Bhaya Haranam. Sarva Loka Ekanatha, who is the Lord of all of the universes, who is the one single Lord of all the universes, who eradicates all fear from the living entities. Thank you for watching our videos. Be sure to subscribe to our channel. We publish new videos every day. And don't forget to like and share our channels.